Hello, my name is Li Shaliu, lecturer of English at the Department of Foundation Courses, South University of Science and Technology of China. Today, my presentation aims to provide a conceptual framework about first-year undergraduate students' English learning transition from school to university in China. It is constructed based on the findings of a qualitative case study at a Chinese university. This presentation is composed of five parts: reasons for the study, research aim, question, and a theoretical framework, research methods, conceptual framework based on findings, pedagogical implication, and further studies. First, I'd like to talk about the reasons for the study. As China deepens its reforming English teaching. How to bridge the gap between English learning from school to university seems to be increasingly significant. Over the past decade, there is a remarkable improvement in high school students' English proficiency. Take the amount of English vocabulary as an example. According to the National English Curriculum of High School, students are required to use approximately four thousand words, excluding derived words. Compared with this, the National College English Syllabus only requires students to master about five thousand words. For most non-English major first-year undergraduates, learning another one thousand words only takes them one year or even one semester at some famous universities in China. In this case, they might think that general English courses at universities may be inefficient in improving their English proficiency. Additionally. Due to the uneven distribution of education resources caused by regional differences, new undergraduates would have diverse English capacities. Even though this issue can be solved by placement teaching, its influence on students' English learning cannot be completely avoided. Under such circumstance, how to facilitate first-year undergraduates' better adaptation to college English learning has become increasingly important. Which stimulates us to explore the transition process of the students' English learning. In addition to the aforementioned reasons, students' learning ability and college English curriculum itself also suggest that this undergraduate transition of English learning from school to university can no longer be left unelaborated. In terms of students, because of their previous learning experiences in Chinese high school. They tend to be very dependent on their English teachers, a lack of the ability of independent learning. However, the diversity of teaching methods at universities demands plenty of independent learning from students. This poses the first challenge on students' learning capacity. As for universities, the status of general English courses is no longer a high school major subject. But downgrade to college foundation courses. In addition, the contents of national college English syllabus have some overlaps with that of the school English curriculum. The results of some previous studies suggest that students may think the college English course repetitive and lack of interest. Such a finding also challenges our college English language teaching and learning. What's more. There are some other research gaps from the perspective research methods. First, many previous studies drew their conclusion based on documentary analysis, not empirical study. Even though there are some empirical inquiries, there are many from the teacher's perspective, not students. Second, questionnaire is prime is the primary research instrument, which restricts detailed feedback from individuals. Therefore. Empirically investigating how to bridge the gap between English learning from school to university from students' views seems to be very significant. This may provide important practical implications for the way that teachers and higher education institutions in China support undergraduates' English learning. This study aims to conceptualize this transition process from students' perspective. In order to fulfill it, a general research question is formed and listed below. According to students, 
What do they experience in their English learning transition from school to college? In terms of students' English learning experience, the existing literature suggests two aspects for investigation. One is the consistency of curriculum and teaching. The other is learners' personal development. With respect to the former, some previous studies have pointed out the differences between the two. The first is the diversity of college English textbooks, which has been noticed by some researchers. However, these textbooks have similar ideas in their compilation. Tai, a famous English professor in Chinese University, argues that many college English textbooks are similar to those designed for English major students, not without considering academic English training and the characteristics of different subjects. I agree with him because the current college English textbooks in China, or published in China, mainly refer to general English, neither academic nor subject related. This suggests that no matter what subject students are learning, they are likely to accumulate English words in their own subjects and express their ideas in academic English. As for the latter, this study adopted Bridges' transition model as a theoretical framework to guide the empirical investigation. The reason is that it includes the change of people's feelings during the transitional process, which can help better understand students' view of their personal development. The core perspective of the research question. In this model, Bridge argues that people who are in a transition process will experience three stages, ending the old, the neutral zone, and beginning the new. Compared to the first and the third stage, the neutral zone stage is more fluctuated. During the process, people will experience emotional changes. At stage one, they may feel a comfort. However, at the neutral zone stage, they will feel discomfort and loss, full of uncertainty and opportunity. After stage, when they finish the transition, they will have more promises. The non-specific feature of the research question made the study more explorative than explanative. It provides certain freedom for me to describe and understand students' views of their transition in depth. Given this, a qualitative research strategy appears to be more suitable for investigating these questions because it aims to inquire how the social experience is created and giving meaning. In terms of the research methods, this study used convenient sampling. 33 first-year non-English major undergraduates from a research-based Chinese university, of course our university, voluntarily participated in the study. Data was collected through face-to-face -face semi-structured interviews with individual students. I adopted in-depth interview because it provided a better access to the participants' different inner perceptions attitudes and feelings of their learning engagement experiences through natural conversations and help avoid forming an incomplete understanding of these perceptions. In addition, it would not restrict participants' responses. After that, the data was analyzed through an inductive thematic approach to identify themes for conceptualization. After analyzing the participants' interview transcripts, I got some findings. At the pre-transitional stage, even though the results of previous studies show that Chinese high school students' English improved a lot, the participants in my study were still not confident about their English proficiency, especially in listening and speaking. In order to achieve a better score in the college entrance examination, the major ways of their English learning are reciting words and doing written exercises. Most participants dissatisfied with their high school English studies, so they have relatively high expectations for college English study. Some hope to have smooth communications with native English speakers 
Some hope to pass a variety of English tests with high grades, and some would like to improve their academic English at universities. All this suggests that there might have been a tension already between students' actual English learning practices and their English learning self-awareness and expectations at the pre-transitional stage, which could push the pace of the transition. At the transitional stage, as Bridges' transitional model indicates. Students are ending the old situation and coming to the neutral zone. First, twenty-four participants believe that there were some overlaps between school and college English curricula. Unlike what has been mentioned in the existing literature, such overlaps are more positive in students' view because they can consolidate what they have learned and better their understandings of new English language points. Only two participants whose English is far above the average disagree with such overlaps. Lee suggests that a better connection with the school and college curricula is necessary for most first-year non-English major undergraduates. Twenty-two participants believe that college English teaching is more diverse and relaxed. Listening and speaking are emphasized. The knowledge they learn to are quite different. However, they felt uncomfortable and lost because of such an inconsistency of teaching methods in most, I mean, in school and university. As for student development of their learning capacities, most participants realize that English study at university level needs lots of their independence and self-directed learning. They had to adapt to it. Obstacles such as timing and lack of motivation to learn indeed affected their adaptation and caused uncertainty to them. But they were confident about dealing with these problems. They grasped,、uh, grasped every opportunity to better their learning methods and became more responsible for their learning. Such an engagement seems quite positive. In summary, a conceptual framework based on finding is constructed by four major themes: ending the old, relatively high expectation, discomfort and loss, confront teaching diversity, uncertainty and opportunity, exploring learning methods. Beginning the new, confident in future studies. The most significant pedagogical implication for the study is that students' needs analysis is indeed very important. Teaching should help form students' learning autonomy. Although these are not new, they still need to be implanted and further implanted in our in our English teaching. As for further studies, next step, I may do action research. So, as the ELT practitioner,、um, have memos of teaching and students' feedback and analyze them, or I will conduct pedagogical experiments in order to help their transition and have them adapted so、uh, adapted quickly. Well,、um, here are some selective references. For the study, and that's the end of my presentation. Thanks very much.